What's going on? Welcome back. Today's video, we're going to do LFI from TriHackMe. Now, previously, we have finished the Cyber Defense Pathway, and I compiled all of the videos in one playlist so that you can easily access all of the videos and watch the walkthroughs. So basically, you can just uh, type TriHackMe, the Cyber Defense Pathway, and you will find all the walkthroughs for this path. Um, so this video is part of another pathway I have started recently. So <clears throat> the pathway is Web Fundamentals. Previously, I have finished Cyber Defense, Offensive Fed Testing, and CompTIA Ventus Plus. You can find them all on my channel. Now, the new one that I have created is Web Fundamentals. You can also access the playlist uh, for this pathway. Uh, there is already eight videos in this playlist, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be counting. So basically, today will be um, a room from this path. So basically, here we have security tools, vulnerabilities. We start with LFI, and all of the upcoming videos will be part of this pathway until we finish all of the pathways. Of course, complete beginner, I'm going to leave this uh, till the end. So, um, okay. So let's get back now to the room. So LFI, or Local File Inclusion Vulnerability. Now, you may probably have heard of this kind of vulnerability, right? LFI, Local File Inclusion, which is used to access uh, sensitive files on the server. So typically, we have a machine that is vulnerable to local file inclusion. We will um, read sensitive files on the machine, grab SSH keys, and then get root access. Uh, through this process, we will answer the questions laid out in this room in order to finish the challenge. So basically, make sure to deploy the machine and open your browser. Make sure you have perp suit set up and running. And also make sure that your browser settings are configured to run the proxy server or listen on the proxy. So basically, make sure this is uh, 127.0.0.1. 80, 80.81 and um, click OK. So I'm gonna set now the listener to or the intercept to off because we don't need it right now. All right, so coming back to, so we have a page when you open the website here. Okay, now the first task we're, we're, we're required to find the parameter that will be used in local file inclusion technically. In order to conduct or test for local file inclusion, you need a parameter. So what is local file inclusion? So here, as you can see, we have a parameter called page, and it is set the value of this parameter equals to about. So local file inclusion is when you set the value of that parameter into a path of a file you would like to read. Okay. So for example, you might be interested in reading um, a file on the server that's sensitive or contains SSH keys or username and passwords. So instead of displaying the actual value of the parameter, which is set to about, you would type the path of that file. Let's say we would like to access the password file on the uh, uh, system. So what do we do here? We would include the path. But before including the path, we have to do some traversal uh, on the pathway. So basically, we would what we would do here, we would type, uh, let's say, we would get out of the current directory, okay? It, it could be one directory, it could be two directories, so two here, it means that you are getting, you are moving out two steps of the current directory, three, three steps, four steps. And then you include the directory that contains the file. In our case, it is a password file, which is located in etc slash password. So now, if the page is vulnerable, we will be able to see the password file. Let's check it out. As you can see, the password file is displayed back to the user, and we can see the content of the file. Two reasons for uh, this. The first one is the page uh, accepts user input without any further checks. And the second reason is the password file, or the permissions on the password file, are misconfigured so that anyone can access and read the content. So 
That's, uh, these are two reasons on why the local file inclusion vulnerability would occur or would happen or would exist on your site. So remember that you would need a parameter called whatever here, in our case it's space, and you need a path to the sensitive file. First, you, you, you need to move out of the current directory and then input the path to the target file. If the, if the, if the target file has misconfigured permissions or if the website doesn't check the user input, you would end up with a local file inclusion vulnerability, which you can exploit to gain access to sensitive files. Okay, so what else, uh, what else there is we can also access on the system? So instead of the password file, we can also access the user home directory. In this case, the user home directory is Falcon, or the username is Falcon. And we would type bash rc to access the shell or information about the shell of this user. So you can enter that and see information about the shell. As you can see here. This is also one set of files that we are able to read because of misconfigured permissions and unsanitized input from the server side. Okay, so what 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 we can do starting from this position? So additional in addition to reading sensitive files, we can also try to grab and find the SSH keys of the user. So we can use the SSH keys to log in as this user. So what we can do here, let's type again home. So this is SSH keys of a user are located in a file called idrsa, which is located under a directory called .ssh, which is hidden actually. So falcon .ssh idrsa. Let's see if we can access this from the uh, client view here. As you can see, we have the private key. Now, we need this private key in the proper format. So what I would do here, I would turn on the intercept and again enter intercept response so here's the private key in the proper format we can take it and save this private key into a private key file Make sure to save the file, make sure to save the keys in a file uh, and name it as IDRSA. So I saved the file previously and name it as IDRSA. Now change the permission of this file to 600. So sudo search mode 600 IDRSA. Okay, now you are ready to log in to the machine. So what we can do here, say sudo, uh, yeah, SSH. Dash I. The username is Falcon, and then the key that you will use. Yes. Okay. So Falcon at So we're locked in now, and the next step is to conduct privilege escalation. Now, for this scenario, we will take advantage of some of the binaries uh, that are configured or so finally we so we're logged in now um, now the next step is to conduct privilege escalation and uh, let's see what can we do with this user so we can run sudo with, without the need to provide password on the binary journal ctl so basically we can find a way to take advantage of this binary by going to uh, gtf for bins and let's search for okay search for journal ctl click on sudo 
So the way is sudo journal ctl and um, as you can see next we execute bin bash here. So back sudo journal ctl and then execute bin bash. Let's copy that. paste ID so now right now we are the root user ls get user flag and let's get the root flag or let's see where is the root flag get root root all right now heading back to the questions let's see Look around the website, what is the name of the parameter you found on the website? So if you remember the parameter was page, which is the parameter vulnerable to local file inclusion vulnerability. Okay, back to the questions. So what is the name of the user on the system? It was Falcon. Now, name of the file, which can give you access to Falcon's account on the system name of the file which can give you access to what kind of question what you know, the file which can give you access to Falcon's account system uh, IDRSA let's refresh so here ID which is the private key of the SSH what is the user flag? Back to the command line. And here is the user flag. Next. What can Falcon run as root? Bin journal ctl. What is the root flag? And the room is finished. Nice room to learn about local file inclusion. Definitely we will check out the beginner challenge for uh, local file inclusion. Let me click on that, have a look. So it is beginner level FLFI channels inclusion. We will take a look at this uh, in the next or in the upcoming videos. For now, this video is finished and I hope you like it.